Good evening, everyone. Trust we all Good had evening. a great week. All right, so as we continue, um, I remember last week, Sunday, um, when we discussed the topic on the slaying of in the spirit, um, or the Adele raised that it was also good that we discuss briefly the works of the Holy Spirit. And so we are not leaving, we still have quite a number of doctrines that we haven't covered. Um, seed sowing, we haven't covered. So just this Sunday, we would see how much we can cover on the Holy Spirit. And um, we would also, um, we we'll trust God that as we go on, that he would actually continue to lead us and direct us. Um, I would share my screen and we will take it up from there. Um, this is not exhaustive. Um, I want to say something even before we run through this. I have not covered in this talk the gifts of the Spirit. That is a topic on its own. Um, so we will just run through categorically, basically, um, first and foremost, what Christ told us about the Holy Spirit. So looking at John chapter 14, 15, and 16, then we will touch on some other things like the fruits of the Spirit. And we trust God that we can also discuss the gifts. And I trust that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So who is the Holy Spirit? In Christianity, the Holy Spirit is seen as the third person of the Holy Trinity, along with God the Father and God the Son, as is Jesus Christ. The Holy Trinity is the Christian understanding of the nature of God as three distinct persons in one divine essence. Um, in John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. This was Jesus speaking to his disciples. And this is what he told them about the Spirit of God. Um, before I continue, I remember certain um, Elder Obatoki say something very instructive. And that was last week. And he said, when we were discussing the slain in the Spirit, he said, this is one aspect where people have in quote, maligned the Holy Spirit and have attributed the works of Satan to the work of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, verse 28, verse 38, and Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is a gift that we would see that God has given to us. And as a believer, Jesus, even it, it was in the scripture, it was says, if you do not have the Spirit, you're not of me. You do, you're, not, you're not of me. So it's very important that we understand that the Spirit of God, who is the Spirit of God? Who is the Holy Spirit? Through, though the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, believers are saved, filled, sealed, and sanctified. That process of sanctification that we go through continuously in our lives until we get to when we are glorified. It is a work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being a seal. As we go through, we will see it. The Holy Spirit reveals God's thought, teaches and guides the believers in all truths, including the knowledge of what is to come through the scripture. When we look at the revelations, he had already told us what is to come. 
The Holy Spirit also helps Christians in their weaknesses and intercedes for them. The Holy Spirit is God. We should understand that. It's foundational. He's not the power of God. He's not the, no, he is God. And that's something that should sink into our understanding. The third person of the Holy Trinity who eternally proceeds from the Father when we see John 15, 26. The Holy Spirit is co-equal with the Father and the Son. The word, the Spirit, commonly translated in the Greek Testament means pneuma. That's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. He also is God. So I said, what did Jesus tell us about the Holy Spirit? Now, looking at John chapter 14, John chapter 15, and John chapter 16, there are different verses when he was speaking with his disciples. What did he tell them? Who is this Holy Spirit? In the Gospel of John, in the Gospel of John chapter 14, 15, and 16, Jesus provides profound teachings about the Holy Spirit, emphasizing the Spirit's role, presence, and work in the life of the believers. He, as he prepared his disciples for his departure, he assured them of the coming of the Holy Spirit, who would continue his work and presence amongst them. So the first thing is the Holy Spirit as the advocate or our helper. So when we look at John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17, and John chapter 14, verse 26, in 14, 16 to 17, it's, and Jesus said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. These are the words of Jesus. He says he would send another comforter, another helper that would help us as believers as we live in this world because we cannot do it on our own. In John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He will teach you all things. He will bring things to your remembrance. And what is he bringing? Jesus says the things that he has said unto his disciples. Jesus had said, I know a, a passage where is there where Jesus said, there, there, there are certain things I cannot tell you, but when the Spirit comes, he would lead you into all of all these things. That is the Holy Spirit. So in John 14, Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit as the advocate or translated as our helper, our comforter. He promised his disciples that the Father will send the Holy Spirit to be with them forever. The Spirit will dwell with them and be in them, guiding and supporting them in their spiritual journey. Jesus emphasizes that the Holy Spirit will teach the disciples all things and reminded them and remind them of everything he has said. The Holy Spirit is seen as a source of comfort and assistance to the believer. In times of trouble and need, the Holy Spirit is believed to come alongside to provide guidance, strength, and support. The Holy Spirit is believed to teach, guide the believers in understanding and living out and teaching Jesus Christ. This includes helping believers to interpret and apply the scriptures in their lives. When we read the word of God, it's the Holy Spirit that helps us, that illuminates, that gives us understanding. Without the Holy Spirit, you would read the word, the scripture, just like a story and like a text. But the Spirit of God is the one who gives us understanding. The promise provides an assurance. These words of Jesus is an assurance. 
It was an assurance to the disciples and is an assurance to each and every one of us that even when Jesus is physically absent, his Holy Spirit will continue to provide divine guidance and instruction. Continue to provide divine guidance and instruction. He's our comforter. He guides us. He leads us. He teaches us. The word truth, we would come to it. And he says he's the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. You know, we live in a world right now where truth, they say you have your truth, I have my truth. Truth has become relative. But I want to tell you, truth is absolute. Truth is a person. And if you lose, if you do not know the truth, and you will lose your way. He says, I am the way, the truth, the truth, and the life. The Spirit of God, he points us to the truth, to Jesus. He points us to Jesus. In John chapter 15, verse 26, he says, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, but is seen, but it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. He shall testify of me. We would, we would when we, in one other of the points, we would try to expatiate on that. Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. In John 14, 17, he explains that the world cannot accept the spirit because it neither sees him or knows him. But the disciples know him because he lives with them and shall be in them. In John 15, 26, Jesus reiterates this, stating that the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father will testify about him. That is Jesus. The Holy Spirit's role is to reveal and confirm the truth about Jesus. The, I want that to say, the role of the Holy Spirit is to reveal and confirm the truth about Jesus, about the Christ. The Spirit of God will not come and speak about himself. He would come to glorify Jesus. He would come to speak about Jesus, guiding the believers into all truth and helping them to discern between truth and falsehood. We're in a day and age where falsehood is rampant. But we need to walk with the Spirit. We need to, to study the Word. We need to trust in the Holy Spirit and He would, he would guide us. Still in John chapter 14, 15, and 16, the spirit as a guide and <clears throat> a convictor. It says in John chapter 16, verse 17 to 11, but remember 7 to 11, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, Jesus was telling them. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he would reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. The spirit of God is the one that does what convicts us of sin. He reproves the world of sin, shows us what righteousness is and of judgment. Why of sin? Because they believe not on Jesus. Why on righteousness? Because they, he goes to the Father and ye shall see me no more, he was telling them. Why of judgment? Because the prince of this world is judged. The Spirit, one, one, one thing the Spirit does is to reprove of sin. Even as believers, sometimes we miss the mark, but the Spirit of God is there to come and lead us, help us. 
We're not perfect. We trust God every day and walk with him. But we have is the spirit of God in us, in us to help us. In John chapter 16, verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he would guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. He shall not speak of himself. He shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. In John 16, Jesus expands on the role of the Holy Spirit, explaining that it is actually for the disciples' benefit that he goes away, because only then will the advocate come to them. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, revealing the true nature of sin and the need for righteousness. Additionally, in John 16, 13, Jesus states that the spirit of truth will guide believers into all truth, speaking only what he hears from the Father and revealing what is yet to come. His guidance ensures that believers remain aligned with God's will and purpose. The role of the spirit in glorifying Jesus. He shall glorify me. He, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father had from mine are mine. Therefore said I that he shall make of mine and shall show it unto you. Finally, Jesus explains that the Holy Spirit will glorify him by taking what is his and making it known to the disciples. Everything that belongs to the Father also belongs to Jesus, and the Spirit will make these truths known to the believers. This emphasis that the this emphasizes, emphasizes the unity between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and underscores the Spirit's role in revealing the full scope of Jesus's ministry, Jesus's mission, and the will of the Father. So you would not see. You see, in this day and age, people have become. I don't know. The Holy Spirit. He glorifies Jesus. He's not speaking about himself. But today we see Holy Ghost this, Holy Ghost that. People, the, the, the spirits now that we have, instead of glorifying Jesus, the, the spirit now is glorifying himself. That is not the spirit of Christ. That is not the spirit of any spirit that glorifies himself, that poor points attention to himself, is not the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ does what? He glorifies Christ. He points us to Christ. We need to understand that. So when you're in a place and you're seeing a hey, emphasis on the Holy Spirit, emphasizing, glorifying the Spirit himself, no. He has, Christ told us why the Spirit would come. One of the things he's going to do. Other scriptures about the Holy Spirit as Holy Spirit dwells in believers and fills up and fills us up. No, First Corinthians chapter three verse sixteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Holy Spirit is God's presence in the lives of believers. We also see the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples in a powerful way on the day of Pentecost, fulfilling Jesus' promise. To them, it was a specific event. It was, I want us to understand that it was a specific event. Today, people are still trying to replicate this event. It is not possible. It has been done. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a rushing, blowing, or a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So we see the Spirit at work on the day of Pentecost. He is a source of revelation, wisdom, and power. These are, the, these are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, 
For who knows a person's thoughts except his own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. God gives his followers the Holy Spirit. So we know him. Since the Holy Spirit is God's spirit, it knows the thoughts of God and reveals it. He has revealed it to us through the word. The Holy Spirit opens the eyes of the believer as you read the word. It gives you understanding, hope of salvation and their inheritance in Christ. Jesus knew that his disciples would need the power to carry out their ministry as witnesses to the entire world. So he gave them the spirit who came and enabled them to do all that they did. Jesus told his disciples, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and in and to the ends of the earth. And his disciples fulfilled this thing. They fulfilled this thing. Christians have access to the revelation and wisdom from the Holy Spirit just as the Apostle Paul emphasizes to believers in the Ephesian church, Ephesians chapter 1, 17 to 20. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable great power for us who believe. The power, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly realms. That power enables us to live above, to live in this world and, and live above sin. That is what the Holy Spirit enables us to do. He is a seal. He's a seal. He is a seal in the lives of the believers. It's like when he comes, what is the spirit of God inside of you? In ancient times, the seal is a legal signature attesting ownership and validity what's it, to what it was sealed. The Holy Spirit is our mark of adoption as God's children. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to his followers so that they could be confident of their salvation. Just as you might make a deposit or a down payment on a new car to make sure that the salesperson doesn't sell it to anyone else. The Holy Spirit is a deposit on our lives, confirming the validity of Christ's message and that we belong to Christ. It says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praiser. These, these scriptures, when you read them, they they are meant to bring joy to you. They are meant to help, help us to understand the love that the Father has for us. That he paid a down payment for us as he saved us by giving us his spirit. And his spirit remains in us forever. And once that happens, when he comes, that redemption happens. And we are translated. We are glorified. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. He is the seal to the believers. He helps us in our weaknesses. He intercedes for us. We all have times when we, are, when we feel weak and we don't know what to do. The Holy Spirit helps us align with God's will by interceding for us during such times. It's the Holy Spirit that intercedes for us. In the same way, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to the will of God. When we, 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 we go to him and say, Spirit of God, help us. Help us. He knows our hearts. He knows the will of God. And the Spirit of God helps us. 
Finally, very importantly, the Holy Spirit sanctifies and enables the believers to bear fruits, to bear fruits, to bear fruits. He says the work of the Holy Spirit in a Christian's life is an ongoing process of becoming holy through sanctification. Through the conviction and the power of the Holy Spirit, believers will not indulge in sinful acts of the flesh, but will bear the fruits of the Spirit. But will bear the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christians have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and the lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Another translation would would translate temperance to self-control. The Holy Spirit is not a spirit that makes you lose your control. We talked about it when we spoke last week. No. He said the, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. The Holy Spirit does not allow you lose your control. One of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. As believers, when you see a spirit that in, that sh makes people lose their control, uncontrollably, uncontrollably jacking and being a step, um, all manner of, that is not the spirit of God. That is not the spirit of God. The spirit of God helps us in this Christian life to love, to love, to have peace, to have joy, long suffering, because we would go through, we would carry our cross on a daily basis. We would be persecuted. We would go through trials and tribulations. But the Spirit of God is there to enable us to go through these things. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Those are the things that the Spirit of God grants unto us. Those are the things the Spirit of God grants unto us. So like we said, this is an introduction to what the work of the Spirit is. Um, I believe as we contribute, some people may want to speak on the gifts of the Spirit. But when we read 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14, we would see people would also, what they attribute things to the Spirit of God, the slain in the Spirit, speaking in tongues, and so on and so forth. But we see even in the Corinthians, when, when, when Paul was writing to them, he says, do all, are all apostles? Clearly we know that there's a rhetorical question. Are all prophets? Do all speak in tongues? No. No. So I trust that the Lord God would actually help us to understand who his spirit is and to know what his spirit has come this is, like I said, is not exhaustive, but it's just for us to understand in brief the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. And we would continue with our discussion as we go. So please, um, I know Elder had already raised this. So if we have um, contributions, if what we want to say, let's um, jump in. And I trust that the Lord would help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So there was a topic uh, that Kumuyi was uh, treating a uh, very long time ago. So, and uh, he said that uh, gifts without grace uh, is uh, that uh, the person has the power, so to say, and the gifts of the spirit, uh, but the fruit of the spirit is not there. So what I want to uh, be able to understand what he means that uh, you can, uh, the gifts are there, but uh, that uh, there is a gift without grace. So I couldn't understand uh, uh, what he was trying to say. Uh, and uh, but the fruit of the spirit is not there. Uh, 
he says what's that going not to lead he said that all that what that is going to lead is to perdition and indignity you know so in fact i had to uh, put it down so now that we know that we are going to study this and i went and brought out the where i put them down a kind of that gives without grace the person has the power so to say and the gift of the spirit but the fruit of the spirit is not there what that's going to lead is to perdition and indignity. Then he went on to say that gifts without grace, you know, uh, he said the charisma, the charisma uh, without character and the gifts of the spirit and working miracles with no grace of God, you know. So, and uh, uh, I couldn't understand the head and tail of what he was uh, kind of trying to uh, say. I thought I thought you said you wrote it down. So what yes. did you understand? What did you understand at that time when you were writing? Because you must have been. I mean, if you wrote. Is it that you didn't hear the learned gentleman properly, or <laughs> because you wrote it down? <laughs> he was. He was. He was telling a story of. Uh, first of all, he he used. Uh, his, it was. He was teaching on. Uh, uh, let me see. He was teaching on. Uh, uh, exploits of a charismatic christian leaders you know he was teaching on it, uh, exploits of a charismatic christian leaders you know so i when you he, he mentioned a lot of things so in the initial stage he was saying that uh, when he was born again for instance he he had a friend of his that was sick uh, the only thing he could say to him was to sympathize with him and to uh, uh, know how he was feeling, but he couldn't do anything. So he now had to, uh, the, he only had, the, he didn't have the courage. He couldn't have the courage. He, he didn't have go far because it, grace was not there. Uh, grace without the gift was not uh, was not there. Was, you know, it was talking a lot of things, you know, out of place. So that's why I had to really listen carefully and to uh, put them down. Mm. Uh, okay, let that go, Aish. Okay. Yeah. Because I just but, wanted him to I read uh, First Corinthians want... 12 and 1, 11. I just wanted him to read First Corinthians 12 and 11, and you will see that uh, uh, those, those just um, put together as no meaning. But go ahead, uh, Elder. So, yeah, I just want uh, uh, Paul Luzokwe uh, not to confuse himself too much uh, with uh, these uh, teachings from uh, the learned uh, gentleman. Um, because the man said that at that time he had grace, he just didn't have power. That, that was, uh, I, I want Paul to, to get that one very clearly. He, he had grace. Uh, and he didn't have the Holy Spirit at that time, too. That's part of what he taught in that yeah. particular uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. he, that he didn't have the, the Holy Spirit uh, grace to him as at that time. Grace to him was, equal, was actually equal to human compassion. As far as the man was concerned, that he had grace. He had human compassion, but he didn't have power to do miracles. So I, I, I think I think that is in that is in line with what uh, Paul read. What from what what you had? I hope it is. Yeah, because he went it, on it, saying that we he, went, he went on saying that eventually he he, he discovered the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, and now he yes, has yes. he has to go yes. back to the person. Uh, but by the time he got there, they told him that the person has passed away. So he now vowed that there would not be yes. any person, since he has discovered the power, that there will not be any person again that will ever be sick in their, you know. So I, the thing was... Uh, no, I, no, uh, people can be sick. People can be, no, no, well, get it. People can be sick. But as soon as they fall sick, he will, he will rush there. That's what he said. As soon as they first they first they first they, they will rush there to quickly heal them. So that they won't die again. That's what he said. Oh, uh...
is uh, I I really uh, I followed the I, this to be able I, to I think I think no 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 you can't understand this is not uh, is not uh, open to to understanding by ordinary men like you <clears throat> um because from the little that I know I'm not sure you you already have the power to make sure you heal everybody around you. I don't think you have that power. Do you have the power? <laughs> I, and, and he did, God, he did. God, do you he, have that power to heal everybody? Your, grand, your great grandparents, your whatever, once they fall sick, you just quickly rush there to, to unleash your power on them. Yeah, that, that's uh, I couldn't understand it uh, for somebody that uh, will make such utterance. So, and, do you have that power? I'm, I, I, I don't ask you a question whether you have the power. Do you have that such power? No, I don't think I have it. Eh? You don't think, but but you think you, it's well, possible you have the power somehow. I don't have it. It's only God that has such power. Uh, that's what I want to say. That's what I want to say. I, I want to tell you that Kumo doesn't have the power either. Because if he did, if he did, his wife will not die. His wife will not have died. <laughs> the man is from the man. The man is. You see, you see, sir, sir, and our brethren. Please listen to me. Um, people like Kumuyi is a very sad story of somebody who does not know the Holy Spirit teaching Christianity, attempting to teach Christianity when you do not even know who the Holy Spirit is. In the video that Paul Zokwe is referring to, the man said that he had grace, but he didn't have power. Because according to him, Christians may have grace. They may have the Holy Spirit without having the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But he got to a situation in his own life where he had grace, he had the Holy Spirit, he had the power, and he could actually decide. I, I, this is, I'm paraphrasing him, and for the sake of people who are coming to this website, if, if you check our archive of, of video, because when I had it myself a few years ago, I was shocked that the man was saying such things. And the only thing he tells me was that Mr. Kumuyi does not know anything about the Spirit of God. He speaks about he speaks about the Spirit of God as a property in his pocket that he could unleash any time he wanted to. He said, from that moment, from that moment, nobody will be dying again from around 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 him. Um, yeah. Yes, yes but it won't it won't solve it won't ask anybody to die the way his friend died. That, that is that's that's the confirmation that the man doesn't know what is what he doesn't know the difference between him and God. He doesn't know he doesn't know who God is. If you can say that you are in a position to prevent people from from, from dying. The moment they fall sick, you simply quickly rush to the place and you heal them. To me, those are some of the things that confirm to me that William Kumi does not know who God is. He doesn't know God. Because nobody in the Bible, nobody in the Bible ever presumed to do what he said he, he now had the power to do. Nobody in the Bible ever ever presumed to, to decide that power. It was only the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, the Lord Jesus Christ said that he did not do anything except as the Father instructed him to do. But Kumuyi, Kumuyi in that particular video said that he had the power. From that moment onward, he now had the power to ensure nobody would die around him. I expected Mr. Kumuyi, after I published a, a small report about that particular video, I expected, you expect him to repent 
to come out openly and say, there was a time I, I thought things like this, but I, I regret. But because he really doesn't know anything about God, so people like him, they do not, they don't repent of evil teachings. I would advise people, please, don't make effort to say you want to understand Kumuyi, because Kumuyi is, cannot be under, does not understand himself. We, we just read the Bible. Once we read the Bible, what we, you see, there the, are the, the, a few places, that, things I want to mention before I drop, please. Uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, and I think our coordinator mentioned, mentioned it. If a man does not have the spirit of Christ, the Bible says the person is not his. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you are not one of his. One important thing the Holy Spirit does, the moment he comes to you, is that he gives you understanding about the things of God. That, that's the thing. You, you begin to understand, you, you read the Bible and you actually understand it. That this is what the Bible is talking about. This is what God wants you to know. The very first thing the Holy Spirit does is to remove the cobweb, the cobweb of errors um, and superstitions and lies, of bad teachings. Remove the cobweb from our eyes so that we, we so that we can see clearly. People who do not have the Holy Spirit. They do not that no matter how much you try to, to, to explain things to them, until people come to God, they cannot know him. Until they come to God in repentance, in true repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they cannot do, they cannot know the truth, no matter how much they try. Um I believe some other people will make more contribution on this thing. Please, please, please so, I want you. Uh, let please, me just, yeah. please, please, I want you to, uh, because he, in in that uh, particular teaching, he said, uh, hello? Yes. Bye. I'm with you. In that particular teaching, he did mention also that grace is uh, charisma and that the gift of the spirit is character. So I want to also uh, be able to understand because I can't find such in the scriptures also. So if, if that's right. <laughs> well, I think I think I've answered the question really. So very candid. Okay. Um, the, 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 yes, I have. The, the, the issue, the topic, of the Holy Spirit is for an unbeliever to teach. So, so throwing about uh, words in the dictionary, yes. uh, um, grace, character, um, whatever, they, they will not they will not substitute for the lack of knowledge of God. That is actually the problem of people who are following um, um, uh, William Kumuyi. They are making the mistake of assessing the first class he had, the mathematics, to think that that means that he actually understands the Bible. No. What Paul, what Paul Zokwe is doing is so pick the Bible, pick uh, William Kumuyi's words one by one and try to see whether you can square them. You cannot, because they are not from the same source. You cannot. As I said, that video, I've had some time to look at the video to see the, the amount of confusion that the man, that the man had there. Uh, grace is, is different from character. Grace is character. Grace is power. Something is, is you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, and all those things, according to him, they are totally under the control of the man. Grace, according to Mr. Kumo, 
Mui is not a nobleman from heaven that come from God, which is the definition of grace to Christians. Grace is something that is totally under your under your control. Power is something that is under your control. You are the one that decides whether your wife will live or she will die. Whether your friend will live or she will or he will die. You are the one that, that decides, not God. The moment you there's a the place you 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 hit in your so-called Christian life that every Everybody around you that you want them to live, they live. So that you want to die, they die. Are you not a mini god at that stage? Please don't don't make any effort that you are going to understand him. The man does not understand himself. William Kumi does not understand himself. He's confused. He's confused. And people should please the issue that Paul is always raising is very important. People don't, please don't get me wrong that I'm dismissing Paul Zook. I'm not dismissing him. I'm only using this to lay emphasis where emphasis should be that, like the video is talking about, people should go and listen to that, to, 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 to videos of teaching of, uh, of William Kumi in detail like that. And they should listen to them uh, quietly, slowly. Because the, the, the man speaks English in such a fast tempo that, generally speaking, more than ninety percent of people will not understand what Kumu is saying from one particular minute before it jumps into another and into another and to another and to another, and you will not you will not get anything. So what Paul Usokwe had done was simply to maybe get the video of Kumu is teaching. Try to see whether you can understand anything. No, you cannot. You cannot. But I advise people to follow the example of Paul Zokwe. Try and see whether you can understand William Kumi. You will discover no, you can't. Because what is teaching does not make sense. They do not follow the they do not follow the Bible. He himself is confused about what he is teaching. William Kumi is confused about what he is teaching because they are not from God. They are they, they, they are ideas that he copied, that he understood, he, he, he studied from people who are not godly people. According to him, people like T.L. Osborne, people like Godin Lindsay, people like uh, Ora Roberts, these are Alagora people. These are all people from America. They are never Christians. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right. Uh, Thank you. So, we'll have um, Brother K and, and Victoria. So, once Brother K is done, um, Victoria, you're the next. Thank you. Um, I think I think Victoria raised the hand before me. So, please let us speak before me. I prefer. Okay, no, you had interjected before she raised her hand. You, if I you see, understand. okay. That's why okay. I did that. So, okay, thank you. But, thank so you. since you are a gentleman, please, Victoria. <laughs> oh, thank you. you. I'll prepare it too. <laughs> thank you. Okay, can I go ahead? I think, I think he's speaking, but she's... Uh, I'm saying something like a pause sign by her, this thing. Okay, let's go. She's on, the person is on hold, Yes. Okay, Kayode. Um. Okay, thank you very much. And Bra Paul, concerning the things you you were asking, I took the pain of finding a video. Eda has done a video, an extensive video concerning that particular Pastor Kumuyi Salmon. I have posted it on the chat. So if you click mm -hmm. on the link, you will be able to listen to Eda's analysis about that particular thing. And I, in my free time, take time to listen to the videos that are uploaded. I would encourage every one of us to do the same. We would be up to date on the truth, you know, and a lot of things that we ask here, we might not need to ask them. Like those things you are asking Elda, he took the pain to deal with all the, you know, the, 
I don't know what to call it that Kumuyu was preaching on that time. On. Please kindly look at it. It's going to benefit you a lot. It's going to benefit you. So that's been that. Um, I think, so going to the Holy Spirit, I think it is a great topic. And um, like Brad Boma said, he said one thing that really got to me. The Holy Spirit is our deposit, is our purchase. I think in Ephesians 4, it says the earnest of our inheritance, the most important thing we receive from Christ. And it is the Holy Spirit that actually keeps us in God. The Holy Spirit, like Edda said, reveals the truth to us. And that, that being said, it is necessary for us to be students of the Bible as well. So that what we read, the Holy Spirit brings it to us. The Holy Spirit reveals the truth to us, teaches us the truth. And it's essential we appreciate the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts us as well when we sing. And it convicts, it convicts us of our wrongdoing. And John 16, that Brabuma said, the Holy Spirit would lead and guide us into all truths. And like Edda has always quoted Isaiah 35 verse 8, the Holy Spirit will never allow us, no matter how foolish we are, to go into error in this, our journey with God. It is of great importance. However, I want to emphasize that the Holy Spirit does not necessarily manifest himself by speaking in tongues. I used to believe this thing many, many years ago, but I've come to know that it is not true. We, the evidence that we have received, received the Holy Spirit is not to speak in an on, what's the word now, an uncommunicated language, which is in tongues. No, we receive the Holy Spirit at repentance. In fact, the beginning, when somebody begins to feel, ah, I'm living a wicked life, I have to repent and change my ways. That is exactly the Holy Spirit at work in that person's life. Because no man can repent and turn to God without the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not possible. It's absolutely impossible. But the fact that people claim that the evidence of the Spirit is speaking in tongues is not true, it's not biblical. It is an attempt to put God in a cage, to create a formula for God. It is not biblical. It is not biblical. And we see that as a popular thing where a passage a bible one passage is taken and they make train out of it instead of them learning to use so many other passages to explain the obscure passage they use the obscure passage to form a doctrine that they cannot corroborate in any other passages of the bible i think that's just what i wanted to say you know, so Brapo, please take a look at that video. It's going to really bless you, like I said. Thank you. All right. Thank and you, sir. Victoria. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Let let uh, Elder go if Victoria can. I I heard her. I heard the, I heard the person's voice. You can unmute yourself and okay, speak. Okay. Okay. I just did. All right. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, we thank God for this meeting and we thank God for what our daddy has been doing. We really give glory to God. It is good that Nigeria we have something like this. Because for many years, when mm -hmm. I became a Christian, I was fortunate to listen to our president of Christian Research Institute, Hank Hanegraaff, warning people, people mm -hmm. will call in and say, this person, Benny Hill, this person, this person, and you'll be telling everybody, this is what they teach. These people are not Christians, stay away from them. Mm -hmm. They wrote a book many years back, Christianity in Crisis, where that is telling everybody about all these people, this is what they teach, whether they were one, one, one as Pentecostal, that's T.B. Jakes, and all these people. All these people and all those years, I'm always bothering that God, who's going to want people? Because when I listen to all these people, all these faces that represent Christianity in Nigeria, I'm like, these people, they are not even teaching the Bible. And this is not Christianity. And it was so bothering in my heart. And I prayed and I thank God when I came across this channel that, wow, this has been going on for five years because I see some video 
you know, uploaded five years ago. And I didn't know, but we thank God that you are here and we pray that God will continue to do his work, that many people will be coming to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Because one of the great, one of the greatest problems we have in the church is misunderstanding of who Holy Spirit is. And that has derailed so many people. People believe the Holy Spirit can do anything. Holy Spirit can give us a new message. Holy Spirit can say that touch my Holy Spirit. <laughs> what is it that Nigeria don't believe Holy Spirit can do? And that's very damaging because like there is no standard. When it comes to Christianity in this place, there is no standard. Is Holy Spirit is just doing everything. And and the problem, people are not reading their Bible. Because if we read the Bible and we read the book of Jude, that's telling us that Christian faith is a faith that was once and for all delivered with a past tense is being delivered. It's not an evolving faith. It's not a faith that this generation do it this way, another generation are coming, they're going to do it that way, then God is changing his ways. No. God says, I am God and I change not. It's not changing. It's not giving us new messages where you have um, somebody like Oyedepo saying that the message that God gave him is a message of miracles, a message of faith, is a message of prosperity. I'm like, all these people, when I hear all these people, God, I have a body, my head hurts. What is this? This is what we call Christianity in our country. This is not Christianity. But we thank God that, you know, the truth is coming out. We have obligation to share it. Right? It's, a, it's a lot of work because one of the problems that this fake Christianity has created is, it has given a lot of people assurance that they are Christian. And the moment you started talking about Christianity, about the Bible, by, by Christian, by biblical Christianity, they are racing up battle. They are racing up battle. So the mighty God that um, I give you, the, give you people the grace and the strength to begin this, we got to do it. It's a lot of praying. That only God and really the Bible already said it. Except that Lord draw people, they cannot come. Jesus said, "You are not if, if my you cannot want to come to me unless, unless my Father br bring them." So mm -hmm. we do a lot of praying and we feel, believing that God will do His work in the life of many people. When we talk about Holy Spirit, people a lot of people believe that it's a second blessing. It's <laughs> something you receive after you become a Christian. And yet, the, the, we know from the word of God that you can't even become a Christian with that Holy Spirit being involved in your life. Those of us that have been involved in sharing the gospel with people, doesn't matter how good you are, about how you present it, until the Holy Spirit opens their heart, they're not going to understand what you are saying. It's like Greek to me. They don't understand it. And a lot of us also believe, we know that some of us have been in the church for many years before we became a Christian. We've had so many messages. It's the Holy Spirit that will do the work. So. The Holy Spirit is involved in Christian in the life of a person at the beginning, but before you even get converted. At the conversion, Holy Spirit is there. And Holy Spirit remains with us. Like Jesus said, it will be with you. So that good understanding of who the Holy Spirit is, is good. It's great. It's needed. Because a lot of people even believe the Holy Spirit is it. They use it to describe the Holy Spirit. It's like it's a force. So that's why they command him. That's why they think that they can control him. They can command him. They can put him in their pocket and carry so many people today. They, they, they treat God of the universe as the Chinese God. The Chinese people, they, 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 go, they go to the Chinese restaurant, you see their God, where they put their God. And people want to treat the God of the universe like that, a God that they can control. They can decree and, and prophesy in their prayer. That's not the God of the universe. And the God that so many people are holding on to in this land is not the true God. So may God continue to empower you and may he bless the work that is being done on this platform so that the Lord will use it to bring many people to good understanding of who God is and the three person of Trinity in, the, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the good work that you're doing. Amen. Well, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Sister Victoria. Thank you. Um, so we we'll have um, Elder Adelaide and um, Sister Yoke next. Well, um, I, I I don't know where uh, how happy I was to hear Sister Victoria say so many things. The fact that uh, people call themselves Christian, 
like Kumui. Who does not he does not know how to cook. In fact, like anybody, because next week I will I will want us specifically, sir. Don't please, please. I'm not really as a particular because sometimes they tell us that we take their messages halfway. But unfortunately, if you know, I sent you that thing about uh, uh, sanctification. Uh, I sent the elder. Somebody sent it to me. And I was thinking that he was sending something. Uh, to, I, if you don't mind, anytime I don't, I will search it. We will look at it because that, and in it, you will see that Adewale does not know anything about Christianity, nothing. The same way when I asked uh, uh, Brother Paul that, uh, okay, do you understand what you wrote? That's the same way all those people sit down there. And they don't understand a single thing. However, let's get to work. Just as our coordinators have spoken concerning the Holy Spirit, people do not really know uh, the place of the Holy Spirit in our life. And Ephesians 1 and verse 13 has told us that that day, you had the gospel of your salvation. God gave the Holy Spirit as a guarantee, deposited it. And what will it, in fact, can anybody be a Christian without the Holy Spirit? No. That's why I was I was clapping for my sister because she was actually in her speech, she didn't quote the Bible, but she was actually saying what John six John 16 and verse 8 says that the Holy Spirit will convict. You have seen. So he is present at the point of that salvation. No, nobody can be, nobody can understand that he's a sinner. I said the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. So you see, when, when I was just clapping, because that's exactly was just quoting, it was speaking the scripture. And God made it so for us. Most of most of uh, every place where they pray, at the end of the prayer, they quote uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and mm -hmm. the fellowship. This Holy Spirit is with us to fellowship. It's a wish. It's a, it's a wish. If you look at it, Paul was just making a wish. But immediately after each prayer, they are the grace. grace of In fact, they have they have created their own and the sweet fellowship. Uh, then they they put so many uh, uh, things in there, pastoralizing the word of God. Mm -hmm. Brother, sister, uh, when uh, when brother Paul spoke. The other thing I could say is that it is the Holy Spirit that a portion gift as it is needed to do to whoever. So, Kumuyi thinking that it's going to be the, the thing is going to be raised, you know, it's like people call themselves uh, the liberal minister, healing minister, the healing school, all those nonsense. That's why they are able to say there is a, 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 a miracle hour. But because people do not have the Holy Spirit and what they are seeking for is what they are going to eat, drink, and wear. And Christ said, this is what is in the mind. A friend of mine in the U.S. said that the wife will go and sleep quickly in the afternoon so that he can wake up to do Jerry's nonsense in the morning, in the middle of the night in the US. You know, that thing falls to around, I think it falls to around three or two in the night. This is the art of idolatrous art. Idolatrous art that the spirit of God has no. Nothing to do, no, no, nothing, nothing to do with those people. 
That's the same way. You find somebody flying from California to uh, to New York to go and watch Benin, to go and watch all those people because they do not have the spirit of God. And it's, it, it doesn't matter whether you are educated. I have a friend of mine who had been a, a register who was telling me that if I way put his hand, it will transfer spirit into you. He's talking of God. He's talking of God that God will be transferred from uh, human flesh. I, I hope you know what you are saying. <laughs> Don't. I hope you know what you are saying. So, if somebody thinks that by me putting my hands on somebody, then the Holy Spirit, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, you have to remove uh, Acts chapter 8 from uh, Acts chapter 8 from the Bible before I can believe that one. I said, well, I, I don't need you to believe and I'm not going to convince you to believe. I pray that the Spirit of God will open your eyes of understanding so that you may know the hope of his calling upon your life. And unless you do that, you continue in your ways, in your sin. Thank you. Let me just stop there because all of you have spoken nearly of, nearly of my mind. Okay, I think um, just briefly before Sister Yuki speaks, um, I just want to emphasize on something which is very foundational and which is the place of the apostles and the prophets and the authority that Christ gave to them. You see, if you do not have that understanding, you can begin to pick certain things that they did and think that you can do it. And that is a great error that a lot of people um, are toying with that's just what that's your the, the friend of yours was saying if you can take Acts chapter 8 away but forgetting to understand that Christ said that the, it's clearly stated that the foundation of the church was built on the prophets and the apostles and Christ the cornerstone there are certain things that the apostles and prophets did that you cannot do and until we understand that critical part, we would, people would, they would continue to deceive, deceive, um, deceive, deceive people. Even the apostles, they didn't, the apostles didn't do it by their own will. No. The apostles, they didn't do it by their will. That is it. That is it. Sister Yoke, please, over to you. Oh, thank you, bro. Ladakma. I think that regarding the foundation you've just mentioned now, the whole of Nigeria wants magic. The whole people want magic. They want to do everything. Like Sister Victoria, they think uh, God is like that of Chinese. They want to do everything. I'm serious, bros. Everybody, even when you're trying to enlighten them, they're like, oh, if crap does it, why can't we do it? Mm -hmm. I want to continue on that. Regarding on the Holy Spirit, like you thought, thank you very much. The second, first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, it says, all, uh, all this work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determined. I mean, he's a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. Is a thought of the Trinity. In Genesis chapter 1, verse, it said in the in Genesis chapter 1, it said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness has covered the surface of the earth, and the, and the Spirit of God hovering over the water. The Holy Spirit was in the beginning. He was the top. In the book of Acts chapter 5, when Ananias and Sapphira came, Peter said, why do you lie to the Holy Spirit? So we've been taught wrongly, even though I'm just in learning myself. The Holy Spirit is a person we all have to know that. 
it's a person, it's not a chain, it's not an energy, it's not a force. Uh, David said in Psalm 139, he said, wherever I go, you are there. If I go to the depth of the earth, with that, that was the Holy Spirit, which is God himself. That wherever, anywhere, you are there, mm -hmm. darkness and wherever, I, I can open it already, that he's there with him. The only three is the one that condemns us when we do things wrong, because he's a person is by all. He's the one that makes us to have the law without the law. The Holy Spirit will not be able to love anyone, will not be able to forgive. He is the one that helps us to do all those things as a human. I'll, I'll stop here. I know most of the pastors, they've taught us so wrongly, like Paul was saying. Oh, oh well, da baba, eh, kumu you say, doesn't make sense. Majority of them. When I look back now, all everything, even the testimony they gave, they are all in, they are not irrelevant because there's no proof of all their testimony. They are all jargon. They're just having gymnastic. Thank you, Bruce. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Yuki. Um, Sister Stella. Good evening, house. Good evening. Good evening. My, uh, I want to ask a question from the book of Acts, chapter 8, from 14 to 17. I read, it says, Now, when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them, and they that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen on none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they lay hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, my question here is this. The Samaritans here, according to this script, they have received the word of God. They have also been baptized in the name of the Lord, and yet they said the Holy Spirit had not fallen on them. How does one receive the Holy Spirit? You know, because most of the churches, they, they all have to receive the Holy Spirit, especially the Pentecostal churches. So if and one has which, received... Which Acts did you read? Which Acts chapter Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. From verse 14 to 17. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, let, me, let, let me ask Sister, you asked a question that uh, you say, number one, you have to know how do you, how are you baptized into Christ? So open your Bible to yeah. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. Read 13 and 14. And read slowly so that you can, in Bible, you can understand. Ephesians 1, 13, 14. Okay. In him you also trusted after you had had the word put. Gospel of salvation. In him also having believed, he has sealed the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, possession to the place of his glory. So what do you understand by that? Because what do you understand by that statement which you just read? Because you are going to tell us the meaning, really. <laughs> yeah. That's why I say you should read this slowly so that you don't rush over it, so that you will sink it in. It says, I... in him you also trusted. You yes. trusted. What does that mean? You trusted after you add the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So after you add that word, after you add that Jesus Christ died for our sin according to the scripture, and that he was buried and on the third day he resurrected according to the scripture, because the Bible told us that the, uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. So He's telling us in this one that you have had this word of truth. You have believed it. You trusted in that word of truth. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. gospel of 
in who also having believed you are sealed that's why you believe you are what sealed Good. with the holy spirit of promise Good. and if you if you do me a favor again you open your bible to john 69 verse 8 and read it for me because this is part of what sister victoria explained john, john 16 and verse 8 and when he had, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. And he will convict. Wait, it. when the Bible says world, it's not talking about believers. It's talking about unbelievers. He will convict, he will convict the world of sin. And this is exactly what Sister Victoria explained: that unless you have the Holy Spirit in you, you are not a Christian. And what uh, Brother Alakule, you know, our coordinator explained to us, really, which was he was telling us that it's foundational and those things, that there's a difference between the time of the apostles. He was telling you that those things, when when the, when Luke was writing that they have not, the, the Holy Spirit had not yet uh, uh, come upon them. Yes, he, uh, in fact, Philip, who was the evangelist, may not even know much because that was the beginning of the church. What convicted them that they believe in Christ was the Holy Spirit of God. So if you open your Bible to Acts chapter 10 as well, and you look at Colonials, when Peter was talking, he was yet speaking. He said the Holy Spirit came upon them. And when you look into Acts chapter 15, when Peter was making a report concerning what happened, that was the only testimony he gave. He said they received the Holy Spirit just as we received it. So we we look into several uh, uh, parts of the Bible. We understand the consistency, and that was why I said that up to my that my friend that uh, sorry, you uh, you know brother uh, brother Bumajo said this that uh, most people think that they have to replicate that and that. No, no. For example, they still cry Holy Ghost fire, but if you look at Acts chapter two, he said the thing was like. Tongue of fire, like, like. It's not fire, it has nothing to do with fire. But yet, because in uh, Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 3, I guess, when, uh, uh, no, I think Matthew chapter 3, uh, uh, John the Baptist said that, he who is coming behind me, we baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. They say, ha, join them together. It becomes Holy Spirit and fire. So the day, the, 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 the one that made the conviction, the one that made the conviction is the Holy Spirit. Because the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, they walk hand in hand. When you make that conviction, God has granted that passage to the Son. Sorry, I don't know whether I've, I jumped into it. Sorry for that. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. Um, Roque, you want to say something concerning this? Uh, very briefly, Your... yeah. Uh, okay. Um, the first thing I wanted to say was, um, I think it's um, uh, with, for everybody that have grown in the Pentecostal church, I trust God that as they begin to hear the truth, God will be able to draw them because um, there is, a, there is a fundamental problem that people that have only been in Pentecostal churches have. And the fundamental problem is, 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 is basic because one of them is they believe by prayer, they command God. That's one. They don't see God as sovereign, as fulfilling his will. Even when the Bible says we should pray according to God's will. That's one of the problems they have. And the other problem that they have is um, the ability to study the scriptures and establish the truth is they don't really labor. So when the Bible says one thing, they jump with it. Example, Luke 6.38. They use Luke 6.38 to believe that, yeah, they can, they can make business with God. All they need to do is give to God and God will give back to them. You know, these are the basic problems that are, are there. And that's why I'm thankful to God for this kind of platform, because 
as time goes on, people's eyes will be opened to basic things. Because that tells me they don't know who God is. The knowledge, the true knowledge of God fails. And the true knowledge of God is the, I think, the first red flag we find. When we read the scripture like Luke 6, 38, that immediately goes against the nature of God. And you know, that thing is not saying what you assume it's saying. It's obviously saying something else. Then you try to bring context into it and get the true picture. But they don't really waste time in doing that. Matthew 8, 17 is another thing. I saw Yedepo quoting Matthew 8, 17 and using it to claim healing for himself. You know, so I, I trust God that God is really bringing people out with this platform. You know, and um, to buttress the point you made about, you know, um, understanding that we cannot do certain things that that the apostles did. I think um, the understanding of the act of apostles failed a lot of people and um, they don't know that history of the apostles, some of them are not for us to replicate. Like you said, the, these things were written as foundation for the apostles, but some of them are not for us to replicate. You know, God, those things have been done. The Bible has been completed and, you know, they are not for us to replicate. And there are people that still believe the Bible needs to be corrected. I mean, there's a popular man, his ministry is to be correcting the Bible and, you know, so I'm really glad that this platform is there and God will be using this platform to change the mind of so many people. I think it's a vital thing because the truth has a way of bearing witness in the heart of the believers. It's only the unbelievers, those that don't know God from the beginning that will fight it. As many as know God, that have the Spirit of God in them, once they hear the truth, that truth will bear witness within them. And I'm really thankful, you know, for this platform on that. You know, coming back to the question the sister asked, um, again, that passage in Acts chapter 8, it has to be understood in the light of so many other scriptures, like Adele has attempted to do. You know, we are not allowed to read one Bible passage and make a doctrine out of it. It has to be understood by so many other scriptures. And when we read the apostle, the, the teachings of Paul, Romans 7 and 8, Paul emphasizes the importance of the spirit. In fact, Paul is saying the Christian life is living in the spirit. Living in the spirit. It's walk in the spirit so that you not fulfill the loss of the flesh. So the, the Holy Spirit is not just our, the greatest gift we have. We are called to lean on the Holy Spirit as our help, as our strength in our Christian walk. And I can understand where she's coming from because the belief of the average Pentecostal is you must have a supernatural experience. Maybe speaking in tongues or you are you know, feeling jittery or whatever before you believe you have the Holy Spirit, you know. So it's important that we we allow the scriptures. And when not only Ephesians 1, the elder quoted, when we read Ephesians 4.30 as well, we will see Paul writing, don't grieve the Holy Spirit that you have been sealed unto the day of redemption. So that means as many as have received Christ, they have the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that they have. It's that thing that makes us spiritually alive. It is there. You know, so those are the things I quickly wanted to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, 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 one minute. One minute, sir. One minute. Um, sorry, sir. Um, and it's, it's well said, and I cannot overemphasize. You see, um, Philip was present in Samaria. Philip did not lay his hands on them and the Holy Spirit came. They had to send for the apostles. I, I cannot overemphasize this thing. When we saw in Colonial's house, 
they had to send for Peter. The angel of God said, go and call Peter. These were foundational happenings. Samaria was like the lost tribe of Israel. The Gentiles, Colinius, was the Gentiles. So you see that God was actually doing certain things and showing certain foundational things. First, it happened at the day of Pentecost. The Jews were all there. The next place you see, with the gen it, it happens to Samaria. These were also Israel. Then we see it happened in the house of Colinus. It's good that we understand the foundation that was, and I remember you saying about prescriptive and descriptive. This was a descriptive passage of what the Holy Spirit has done in this thing that God told them to do. Samaria and to the other most parts of the earth. That was what was happening. So you don't come and pick this thing and think that you can replicate it. So it's a proof text for them, but we need to make them understand that, see, sorry, <laughs> you're getting it wrong. Praise God. Um, Hallelujah. Yeah. Brother yeah. Paul and Sister the, Victoria. The, 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 the Acts chapter 8 where he read, uh, <laughs> I would like uh, a clarity on the verse uh, uh, 16 and 17. Uh, because uh, where I was before, I was told that, uh, uh, which I disagree, because there are other places even before this, uh, this thing, this uh, as chapter 8, that they, they did baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, and they said that the, uh, the, uh, uh, you have to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that if you don't do it in that format, that that's no baptism. So I would like a clarification on that. So that's why I was raising my hand up. Can you, can you ask your question again, please? Because uh, uh, you are uh, saying that, okay, wait. Are you saying that it has to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit? That this no, the, Acts the, chapter the, 8, the, verse 8, yes. Yeah, it's they wrong. said the, the, the format, no, it's, uh, that's not what I'm saying. The format is that you have to, any baptism that must be administered must be administered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, but uh, I am of the opinion that, uh, uh, that if we baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus, that the baptism is not complete. So, which I don't think is right. Uh, you can baptize in any of the name because if you say that Jesus is God and you baptize in his name or you baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, then it's not uh, complete uh, uh, when you baptize only with the name of Jesus. So I, I want a clarity in that also because uh, I don't understand why it should be taught in that uh, way. Baptizing with Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, and then uh, that is okay. But to baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is no longer, it's not okay. So that I want a clarity on that, please. Okay, Elder, do you have anything to throw, any light to throw on that? Yeah, the little I can say is that um, Rapol is talking about uh, verse 16. Yes. Yes. Um, the Bible never said that the people who are taken back to the river to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I don't know whether my inference is correct. There's no place in the Bible where these people in Acts chapter 8, verse 16, were referred back to the to a body of water and where they were told that being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was wrong. Is there such a place? Not that I've seen. Okay. Brad Paul, do, 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 do you get what I'm saying? Yes, I understand because uh, the uh, 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 why I'm asking the question also is because like in the house of no, Cornelius, I, I get your point. I get why you're mm -hmm. asking because some people try to make um, 
to make a doctrine out of that. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And what they actually are telling you is that there was something wrong with, with what you have in Acts chapter 8, verse 16, that the people being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ actually made them somewhat less than Christians, that they were not tr truly Christians, because they were okay. not baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah, what I'm saying is that people drawing such conclusion, they are not talking from the basis of the Bible. Because this particular group of people, there's no place in the Bible where we are told that the apostles, when the apostles came, when Peter came to them, he now took them back to the, to the water and rebaptized them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I, do, I, 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 hope, I hope that is true. I hope, I hope you get my point. Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yes. The other thing is that if you, if you see, if you go to the, to the gospel, where the Bible mentioned that you, 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 you baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, don't forget the name was not in plural. I hope you know that. <laughs> it, it was in, it's in singular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think we can. I think we can check it. I think it's. I think it's in the book of Mark. Uh, Matthew twenty-eight also. Matthew twenty-eight. Okay, and I think yeah. they uh, will generally know such uh, places. Yeah, the Great Commission. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. If you see the name, the, the, the word used is not plural, it's singular. Mm -hmm. It's a Matthew 28, 19. Matthew yeah. 28, 19. Okay, let's see. Aha, yes, you are correct. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the... You can see, the, 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 you see, there are a lot of things in the Bible that you have to really mind them. They are not grammatically correct. But that is what God wants, you, want, wants us to understand. In this particular place, if you, if you are talking of plurality, what you have is a singular name. Okay. I, I hope you get, you get, yes, I hope you get uh, my point. Yes, uh, because uh -huh. I don't, whether you baptize by the, uh, the, the one in Matthew and the other one, that was why I was asking the question, because I don't see the difference between the two of them. Yeah, it's, it's people who, who are trying to, to bring controversy where none exist. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is what kind of thing that Peter said, that these people are arresting the, the scripture with themselves. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are fighting with the scripture, which they do not understand. And they are, because they want to establish uh, doctrines which have no basis. Is it very clear? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so Sister Victoria, then Brother Revolution. As we okay, round up. thank you. I hope mm -hmm. I'm on mute. You can hear me? Loud and clear. Yeah, we can. Good, good, good. Yeah, the point I wanted to make, our brother made part of the point I wanted to make. If we look in the book of Acts, we see that in some instances, Samaria, when the Holy Spirit first came, the house of Cornelius and a few other places, they, they spoke in tongues. They spoke in tongues when they received the Holy Spirit. But there are so many other instances that they didn't speak in tongues. The Enoch, he was baptized. Before the Holy Spirit took the evangelists away, that it wasn't recorded that he spoke in tongues. When Lydia came to Christ, came to the Lord, when, when, during the poor missionary's journey, she didn't speak in tongues. Her and her household, the jailer, didn't speak in tongues. So it's not something that happened each time that people come to know Christ. And then when we talk about this tongue that people are talking about, they are not even talking about the same thing. And that's the main problem. They change the definition of what tongue is. We look at tongue in the book of Acts, they were speaking people's language. People language, people from Midi, from this country, they mm. had them speak their language. And any time we hear that the tongues is being mentioned in the book of Acts, that's what they were talking about. Glossolalia is a language. 
It's not some words that nobody understand. So now, when you talk about, say, yes. when you say that that is the tongue, though the tongue is languages of men, and they go, then they take you to Corinthians, and say that Paul said that you know they are speaking in the language of angel. Okay, is the language of angel now? That language of angel is it what is supposed now to mark you as a believer? Because in that context, in the book of Corinthians, Paul was asking them, do they all speak in tongues? Are they all prophets? So you can eat your cake and have it. You cannot be saying that uh, speaking in tongues must accomplish the receiving re receiver of the Holy Spirit. And at the same time, it's not even the tongue that was spoken of in the book of Acts. So it's a totally different tongue. This, they, they're using the same word, but the definition and the reality of it is not what happened in the Bible. And it's the same with their prophecy too. Even if you want to take for granted, I mean, for any argument that maybe God is still speaking. When God speaks, it's 100% accurate. You it. cannot find a message of God that is 99.9% .9 accurate. So now they cannot say they have 100% accurate prophecy. And at the same time, you see how prophecy and God is still speaking. So now the God that is speaking now is a God that doesn't know tomorrow because the God, when God speaks, he's looking at the future. It's a God that knows the end from the beginning. So we have, we have a different definition of what prophecy is, and it's the same thing with 